Belgorod Bogodukhov Offensive Operation The Belgorod Bogodukhov Offensive Operation was a combat operation executed as part of Operation Pokovodets Rumiantsev by the Red Army against the Wehrmacht forces. It was one of the operations that was launched in response to the German offensive Operation Citadel. During the Battle of Kursk, German armored units south of the Kursk salient failed to penetrate the defenses between the Voronezh and steppe fronts in the Belgorod sector. The Red Army's Operation Pokovodets Rumiantsev followed Operation Citadel and included as its objectives the immediate liberation of Belgorod, assigned to the Voronezh and steppe fronts. On July 23, German forces of the 11 Army Corps returned to their old, well-fortified positions on both sides of Belgorod. Their combat strength had been reduced by as much as 50% following the battle. Dotty. Early on August 3, 1943, the forces of the Voronezh and Steppe Fronts B advancing on a wide front between Sumy and Volkansk, crossed the Vorskla River and quickly penetrated the defenses of the 332nd Infantry Division and 167th Infantry Division to a depth of 100 km between Timoravka and Belgorod on the northern flank and as far as Bogodukhov sweeping aside the weakened 19th Panzer Division. By August 5 Belgorod which was defended by 11 Army Corps was also being surrounded and isolated, requiring attempts by the German Army Tielungkampf and 4th Panzer Army armies to relieve the garrison which was ordered by Hitler to defend the city. General Rouse explains. On August 3 after Soviet artillery had fired heavily for one hour, the enemy offensive began along the Belgorod-Kursk Highway, with the aim of pushing through the salient around Belgorod where the boundary between the 4th Panzer Army and Army Tielungkampf was situated and thereby dislocate the entire defensive line. In this they succeeded completely. Their heavy barrage hit the 167th Infantry Division, which had taken up positions in a former Soviet anti-tank ditch, located a few kilometers in front of the fortified line. Within a short time massed Red Army tanks had crossed this ditch, by noon they passed the Corps Command Post and poured into the depth of German positions, all the while firing on our fleeing trains. On the following morning, after a nighttime forced march, Russian spearheads had reached the surprised headquarters of the 4th Panzer Army at Bogodukhov. Since Colonel General Hermann Hoth's army had no reserves available to close the 10km gap in his front between Timoravka and Belgorod, or even to stop the flood of enemy tanks that had already broken through to a depth of 100 kilometers, Russian spearheads reached the area northeast of Poltava and Oktirka on 7 August. These illustrate the dangerous situation into which this development thrust 11 army corps which had been fighting with its front to the east. On the very first day of the offensive, 11 army corps had been attacked in the rear by enemy tank forces situated 30 kilometers in the depth of our positions. These tank forces exerted crushing pressure on our unprotected left flank. At this critical moment, 11 Army Corps had not only been left to its own devices but also had been handicapped by a direct Führer order, which had arrived at the last minute and insisted that Belgorod was to be held under all circumstances. The Corps front now formed a deep salient into enemy territory, which might have disintegrated with complete encirclement as its final destiny. This would have meant a widening of the existing Belgorod to Moravka gap from 25 to 80 kilometers and the immediate loss of several divisions. With these considerations I decided Hitler's order notwithstanding to fight a delaying action in successive positions until the withdrawal reached Kharkov and then hold the city. During the night of 5-6 August, I ordered the 168th Infantry Division to pivot 180 degrees around the city. We evacuated the city after heavy street fighting and occupied a new defensive line prepared on the high ground immediately south of Belgorod. While the German intention was to pinch off the Red Army's offensive thrust at the base of the penetration between Borisovka and Graveren south of Vorskla River, the rapid tempo of the Steppe and Voronezh Front's offensive meant that by the time the counter-attacks were executed the city had been evacuated on August 6, and German forces were now defending Kharkov. The Wehrmacht's mobile forces were heading into an encounter with the main thrust of the Soviet front tank armies. The German counter-attacks were carried out by the 3 Panzer Corps of the Army Tielungkampf in the Olshini area, and the Slay E 8th Panzer Corps of the 4th Panzer Army in the two pincer maneuver of the Krasnokutsk and Oktirka areas. In the fighting that took place on both sides of the Merla and Merchik rivers, 
the superiority of the German Panzer divisions was clearly evident, in spite of being involved in combat operations continuously since 5 July. Whilst 5th SS Panzer Division Viking and 3rd Panzer Division conducted primarily defensive operations, 2nd SS Panzer Division Das Reich, 3rd SS Panzer Division Totenkopf repeatedly blunted attacks of Soviet elements south of the rivers and Bogodukhov. As at Prokhorovka, the Russians enjoyed tremendous numerical superiority in tanks. Both 1st Tank Army and 5th Guards Tank Army began the operations with over 500 tanks each while the SS divisions never had more than about 30 to 50 tanks each at any time during August. In spite of this, all Soviet attempts to penetrate to the railroad line were repulsed with bloody losses in men and tremendous loss in tanks. Ketukov's first tank army thrusts south of the Merchik were repeatedly cut off and destroyed by three Panzer Corps. The attempts by Rotmistrov's 5th Guards Tank Army Army to penetrate to the rail line from east of Bogodukhov were frustrated by 3rd Panzer Division and Viking, with key defensive fighting by elements of Das Reich. Totenkopf executed a masterful attack that cut off elements of infantry and armor from the 27th Army and 6th Guards Army south of Krasnokutsk and then rolled down the line of supply toward Kolomak, south of Konstantinovka. Subsequent attacks encircled disorganized elements of several Russian divisions and destroyed major portions of them after brief fighting. Subsequently, Totenkopf drove to the Merla and forced a crossing of that river and linked up with 4th Panzer Army spearheads at Parshomovka. However Gross Deutschland was forced to withdraw from that town by Soviet pressure on its northern flank, and this success could not be followed up. After Belgorod was retaken on August 6, 1943 by the 69th and 7th Guards Armies of the Steppe Front Sea the way was clear to concentrate forces for the Soviet offensive on Kharkov, 